631, we continue following breaking news on 10 News this morning, where Roanoke police are actively investigating a situation near Patrick Henry High School this morning. We're already seeing it's impacting local businesses. Scratch Biscuit Company will be closed temporarily this morning due to the incident. 10 News reporter Megan Woods is live on the scene. Megan, what can you tell us? Well, like you said earlier, this is still very, very active. Uh, we are at Virginia Heights School where law enforcement sent us after asking us to leave the neighborhood. And when we drove up to Patrick Henry School, they had the parking lot blocked off. And then when we drove a little further, we saw businesses there and what looked like a tactical team. So, you know, we're still looking for answers. And what we do know is that Roanoke City Schools is are closed and we do have a call from the school. Take a listen. Police are asking everyone who lives within a half a mile radius of the 2100 block of Brandon Road Southwest to shelter in place until further notice. Good morning, I'm 10 News reporter Coulter Anstead live in Roanoke, continuing to follow breaking news. A massive search is underway for U.S. Marine Michael Alexander Brown, who is wanted for murder in Franklin County. I'm going to go ahead and step out of the way now so my photographer can zoom in on this RV you see behind me here on the hill at St. Elizabeth's Episcopal Church. This RV is what uh, police believe was the last known vehicle. Uh, the suspect, again, Michael Alexander Brown was using. It was found around 4 o'clock this morning. We don't know why it's in the condition that it's in. As you can see, one side appears to have been completely sheared off. All Roanoke City schools are closed today. Uh, people who live in the general area are asked to shelter in place. A neighbor, uh, a resident rather, who lives in the Tillett Road area here in Roanoke called police to report a suspicious person this morning, and that is how the manhunt began. Here's what Roanoke's police chief had to say about that. Went out as a suspicious person uh, from a neighbor in the Tillett Road area. Uh, individual seen tapping on a window, dressed in a black jacket. Uh, officers responded, uh, was able to confirm to the best of our belief that it was Mr. Brown. And then, of course, we located the RV in close proximity. Rona police say Brown tapped on a window of a home this morning. Lindsay, you talked to several neighbors there. I can imagine they are pretty scared. That's right. It is very unnerving. Now, some neighbors tell me they feel comfortable knowing police have been patrolling the area, but nevertheless, it is still very scary knowing that Brown could be out there. We were actually just told by officers to move further down the street. They've been stationed up there near the intersection of Tillett and Weaver Roads all day long, stopping cars and asking if anyone has seen Brown. And you can see that the police car is blocking the street right now, and there's a helicopter circling overhead. Neighbors say they were told to shelter in place during the manhunt and asked to report anything suspicious. One neighbor tells me that police searched her friend's yard because the fence was open and he has two dogs, so he always makes sure to keep it shut. I'm told that this is a pretty active area with lots of people out and about and walking their dogs, but today it's eerily quiet knowing a murder suspect is on the loose. Especially knowing, I mean, after learning his background, military, marine, um, armed, dangerous, you know, wanted for murder. So, yeah, definitely scary. 10 News reporter Shane Dwyer joins us now live with the very latest on what he's saying. Shane, good afternoon. Patrick, good afternoon to you. We are live in the office right now of Deborah Caldwell Bono. She has been hired to represent this man. Deborah, you've asked us to come here to your office today. What is it that you want to share with us? Well, I just wanted to get the word out to Michael that he does have a lot of support out there. Family and friends love him. Particularly, he knows who's always been there for him. His friends have hired me to be there and represent him, be there with him when he turns himself in. We don't want to have anything happen to him. He can contact them. They will give him my cell phone number. He can call my office. My office will give him my cell phone number. Just asking for him to please know anybody that's in contact with him that he does have support, he does have help, and if he'll please turn himself in, and I will be there for him to help him. We want to see this end peacefully. And they reached out to you this morning to seek your services? I've been talking to them for a couple of days, and then this morning we submitted everything. And have you chatted with the police at all or anything to try to get this message out to him? Yes, indeed. Anybody that might be able to get the message to Michael to please turn himself in, and I'm there for him, and so are his friends, and he knows who they are. And these are folks that really want to see you be able to help him at this point and get him to turn himself in safely so that no one else is injured or killed in this? Absolutely. And at this point, are you able to say, do you know with what information you have that he is still alive or that police have taken him into custody? Uh, last word I heard within the last 10 minutes is that he is, everybody believes he's still alive. Okay. All right. 
Is there anything else you want to share with us? Just, Michael, please turn yourself in. We're here for you. Now at 5, a local murder case turned nationwide manhunt moves into the Star City. Uh, Michael Brown is wanted. We believe him to be armed and dangerous. Local, state, and federal agencies have been searching by ground and by air, but the suspect is still on the run. Tonight, an entire community is on edge, with schools and businesses shut down and neighbors told to stay inside. Never, I've never seen anything else like this happen. You never know if he's cornered or what he could do. We'll tell you what may have brought him to the area as family members make a plea for a peaceful ending. We've got crews across the Star City bringing you live team coverage with what you need to know to stay safe. And we begin tonight with 10 News anchors John Carlin and Lindsay Ward, who are live in the Grandin area with more on this manhunt that is still underway. Lindsay and John. We are live tonight. We're in the parking lot of St. Elizabeth's Episcopal Church. That's where the, the man's RV was found very early this morning. Just to set the stage for you just briefly, that RV is roughly behind us. You see some state police vehicles off to uh, my left is a tow truck that they've told us they'll use to tow that RV away sometime later on tonight. And this has been an active search throughout the day, and it all began on Saturday in Franklin County, where deputies say Michael Brown killed his mother's boyfriend, Rodney Brown, at his home and Hardy. And yesterday we learned the 22 year old's car was located in Clarendon County, South Carolina. And then this morning he was spotted on Tillett Road in Roanoke, where police say he was tapping on his grandmother's window. And then moments later, police found that RV that we just told you about. Investigators say they don't know where he is, adding this is like he's likely on the move and is not afraid to change his appearance. Now, 10 News reporter Arisha Jones kicks off our team coverage tonight. She's joining us now live from the Grandin Road Village area with more on what police are saying about this suspect. Irisha. There's been two news conferences today involving multiple agencies. And what we did learn today that Brown's grandmother lives on Tillett Road, which has been much of the focus for the search today. Now, a vehicle he was believed to be driving was found inside a trailer in Clarendon County, South Carolina last night. Then this morning, there were reports that he was spotted on Tillett Road. The search for Brown prompted authorities to place the area within a half mile radius of Patrick Henry, a high school under a shelter in place. City schools were also canceled as a precaution throughout today. There were reports of sightings, but nothing confirmed. Authorities believe Brown is looking for alternative forms of transportation and may be armed with high powered weapons. And we have an individual who is wanted uh, both locally and federally for crimes against another person. Uh, we have reason to believe that he may continue to be armed and dangerous. And if he is confronted or pushed into a, a position to where he feels like he has no other alternative, then he may use force. Most of the search for Brown right now is still around the Grandin Row area and Patrick Henry High School. But law enforcement is stationed throughout the area. Now the FBI, the ATF, U.S. Marshals Service and the Franklin County Sheriff's Office is also involved with the search and the investigation. Of course, we will continue to update you on this story. Live in Rono, Arisha Jones, 10 News, working for you. All right, thank you, Arisha. Of course, this manhunt started before sunrise this morning in a southwest Roanoke neighborhood. That's when authorities say Brown was tapping on his grandmother's window. And that's where we find Lindsay Kennett live this evening. She's joining us now live from that neighborhood, and she's been talking with neighbors all evening. So, Lindsay, what did they have to say about all this chaos? They say they're still shaken up and feeling uneasy knowing that Brown is still on the loose. Police were stationed all over this neighborhood, especially here along Tillett Road. They were stopping cars, checking neighbors' homes and backyards. Just before noon, police blocked off Tillett Road and told neighbors to go in their homes and take shelter in their basements. Our crews were there as a helicopter started circling overhead and armored vehicles drove down Tillett, which is where neighbors say one of Brown's relatives lives. Other neighbors say they saw SWAT officers knock on someone's home. A woman answered. The officers reportedly searched inside, and when they got back out, that's when all the police left the area. With the sun setting and no new leads on where Brown might be, this manhunt is leaving folks here terrified. I, it was a kind of a shock. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely a shock. That it was right next to Spring Street, and I went, oh my gosh, that's 
right next to my house. <laughs> so yeah, I've been, I've been a little freaked out this morning because that's, that was super close. Neighbors say all they can do now is wait, be on the lookout and lock their doors. Live in Roanoke, I'm Lindsay Kennett, 10 News working for you. All right, thank you, Lindsay. Meanwhile, 10 News was the first on this scene as law enforcement began investigating the RV they believe belonged to Michael Brown. 10 News reporter Coulter Anstad has been there since early this morning, bringing you updates from that the site of that RV with it in the background. And Coulter, uh, I understand that uh, state police are now telling you they think that RV may have been there for 24 hours before they found it. Well, John, uh a church member I spoke to today said another church member uh, noticed the RV around 10 o'clock yesterday morning. And when the church member I spoke to today came to the church today to uh, do some maintenance, the RV was still here, but it was not intact. Take a look. This is what the RV looked like when we pulled up this morning. The entire passenger side of the RV appears to have been sheared off. How that happened is still unclear. As we've reported, this is the vehicle authorities believe Brown used to pull a trailer down to South Carolina. That trailer was found on the side of a road last night and inside was the vehicle Brown is believed to have been using. I was quite surprised. I was glad that I didn't go over there and bang on the door and, and try and open the door last night. So he might have been inside, but I don't think he was because we had so many people here uh, last evening. Coming up tonight on 10 News at 530, I'll have reaction from a man who lives near the church. For now, though, live in Roanoke, Coulter and Staff 10 News working for you. Very good. Thank you, Coulter. And tonight we're hearing from a prominent Roanoke attorney who has a plea for Brown to turn himself in. Now, Brown's friends and family are worried about him being on the run and everyone's safety. That's why they hired Deborah Caldwell Bono to be his lawyer. Caldwell Bono says she's been in touch with those friends for a few days now. She officially joined the case this morning after the manhunt moved back to Roanoke. Now, we brought it first to you live right here on 10 News this afternoon that she She's asking him to surrender. He has a very strong support system in the area. People who love him, who've known him for years and always been there for him, and they are still with him, and they want him to know that. And if he will please turn himself in, contact me, I'll be there with him. He knows who these people are who've always been there for him. Caldwell Bono says she's never been contacted like this for a case, but she is happy to help out in any way she can. And again, her plea is for Brown to turn himself in, and she will see that things end safely for him. Shane, what did you see this evening at the grandmother's house? You know, John and Brittany, we watched this entire thing play out at Brown's grandmother's house. We can tell you tonight that that search turned up empty. They were able to make their way into the house. They cleared the house, secured the house, and they were not able to find Brown. Now, this was an FBI-led effort with Roanoke City supporting. Now, as to why they went back to this house tonight, because they had been here earlier today, that is still the question. We asked if it was because of there was some sort of tip that they got or if it was just a precautionary check, and we could not get the answer to that. That question. With lights trained on a small home on Tiller Road Thursday night, about a dozen federal agents backed up by Roanoke City Police screamed orders into the house hoping Michael Brown would come out. And after three more times trying to get him out over about 30 more minutes, they got no response, and that's when SWAT forced their way in. We could see them through the front window as they turned on the lights and swept through the house, and we could hear the SWAT team say about 20 minutes later that the house was all clear and they did not find Brown. Neighbors started peeking out their window, wondering what was going on as police had driven in silently and made their move. They could be seen walking back and forth out of the house with their weapons and at one point with a box. This is Brown's grandmother's house, where he had been spotted early Thursday morning, setting this search in motion. It's not clear why federal agents came back to the house Thursday night, as police had already searched it earlier in the day, finding nothing, and have been watching it with a close eye. After clearing the house, they eventually searched the rest of the street, talking to neighbors and looking into an empty house that's for sale, but they didn't find anything there either. Neighbors didn't want to go on camera with us, but say they're concerned that Brown has not been captured yet. 